the Figma subreddit when asked if people use auto layout, you'll find that most people say that they auto layout everything. And me, I personally disagree with this approach, especially if you're a beginner for two different reasons. First, newbies will sometimes make the mistake or the assumption that auto layout means automatically providing you with a layout. And this is 100% untrue. If you're not careful about your auto layout, it will screw up the alignment and potential white space and introduce other issues that you may not be aware of because you haven't yet developed the eye. In fact, I think it's a very good idea when you're first starting out with UI UX design that you don't use auto layout and see that if you could piece together layouts that are fundamentally correct from a UI design perspective. Now, the second reason, and this applies to everybody, if you're applying auto layout to literally every possible element that you can, you'll find that you're probably going to have like 10 levels deep of nested auto layouts. And if there's anybody else who has to come in and make changes, it's gonna be a nightmare as opposed to if you didn't have a lot of auto layout already instituted. So I use auto layout quite sparingly. I must design mobile first. While I won't say that designing mobile first is always the wrong approach, I find and many others find that it's way easier to design the full desktop experience and then remove elements, simplify elements as you work your way down to tablet and phone sizes rather than doing the opposite because it's very difficult when you start with the the mobile first approach in design and then try to add elements as you work your way up. I have to use grids. Now I've already done a full video on this topic two weeks ago or so, so check it out for sure, but you don't always have to use grids. I pretty much never use grids when I design. Now, of course, there are caveats here. If you're working with a front-end developer who uses a grid system, then it may make sense to you know design with a grid system so that they don't have to do any guesswork. But you do not need to use grids. And if you're just starting out, you're new to UI UX design, I think it's a great skill to have to be able to design without those constraints such as grids. Being able to eyeball and make sure things make sense in terms of white space, your negative space, and your alignment, and make sure that you can eyeball those things from a raw artistic ability rather than trying to rely on all these grid systems, whether they're horizontal or vertical. Every project needs a design system. Again, 100% not true at all. In fact, it will slow you down. If you're at the beginning stages of a startup, for instance, or if it's like a solo project that you're working on, a design system will slow you down and potentially waste time. So a design system for me is something that's built once an idea has been validated and then it starts to be getting a little bit more complex in terms of the amount of pages and layouts that you're designing for. So a design system is something that, you know, you don't just set it and forget it. It's a living, breathing thing. But at first, I opt not to worry at all about a design system. Yeah, I come up with my color scheme and all that stuff, but I don't document it or any of that fancy stuff. Every project needs an empathy map, a user journey flow, and audience avatars. Wrong. Once again, you do not necessarily have to have any of this stuff. Again, if you're working with a team or a bigger team, this stuff might be mandated or required, but as a solopreneur and somebody who started a lot of different projects in the last almost 30 years, I've almost never created these for my successful projects. I never put wasted time on developing these things. They can be a great thing to do. I'm not saying don't do it, but I'm also saying you don't have to do it. These are not prerequisites for the success of your project. Every project needs a wireframe. So once again, not every project needs a wireframe. And again, it, it depends on the context of where the, this project is coming from. Is it coming from a client? Okay, it makes sense to have a wireframe so that they agree with the general flow. If you're working with an employer, same thing. But again, if you're a freelancer, I, and you have a personal project, maybe you're indie hacking or something like that, you don't always have to have a wireframe, especially if it's a relatively simple project or a landing page or something and you understand what the sections will already be. Wireframes really serve the purpose when you're working with stakeholders, essentially. It is not a requirement of a successful web project, especially if you are an indie hacker or solopreneur, one of those types. I need to prototype all of the animations and interactions that will exist in the project. Again, this kind of falls in line with the concept that if you're working with stakeholders, okay, it can make sense to prototype some of your interactions. Like what does the button look like when you hover it? Stuff like that. 
However, again, if you're just a one man team, maybe this is a personal project, prototyping is not at all required for a successful project. And the reason I'm kind of hitting some of these home is because newbies sometimes think that just because people, other people do it, that they have to do it. And that's not true. Many times it will slow you down. And a lot of these things will slow you down unnecessarily, especially when you already have a solid idea of what you want. You could be working with a client who might be really cool and flexible and they'll trust your judgment. Those are the best type of clients. Again, you don't need to waste all this time creating all of these interactions when you already have an idea of what they're going to be like. So in case you haven't picked up on it, yes, I'm all into speed, especially as somebody who builds their own projects. And in that case, a lot of this stuff, especially the stuff that comes from a lot of the UX gurus, so to speak, that say you have to have empathy maps, you have to prototype, you have to wireframe. None of that is absolutely true. It really depends on the situation itself. So if you're interested in designing the way that I advocate so that you can be super solid in terms of your fundamentals and also speed up your workflow as much as possible, definitely check out designcourse.com, my interactive 16 hour UI UX course, where you will also be able to apply what you learn in interactive projects and also interactive test challenges. All right, I'll stop spamming you. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I'll see you soon. Goodbye.